Hello, and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 5 on Parallel Lines. Parallel lines are an amazingly important idea in geometry, and you've obviously been exposed to them in multiple courses so far. In today's lesson, and we're going to have two lessons on parallel lines, just one right in a row, 5 and 6. In today's lesson, we just want to review the basic ideas of parallel lines, and we also want to play around with angles that are created when two parallel lines are crossed by a third line. Let's begin by just reviewing the idea of parallel lines. Here we go. Parallel lines. Two lines in a plane that share no points in common are called parallel. What this means is that the two lines will never intersect, and the distance between them never changes. Also, two line segments or two rays are called parallel if they lie on two parallel lines. All right, simple enough. Parallel lines, and keep in mind that lines extend forever, all right, forever in two directions. Two parallel lines are lines that never intersect, which means they, know, they don't share any common points, right? That's really what makes two lines parallel. So let's take a look at exercise number one. How good are your eyes at detecting parallel lines? State whether each pair of lines or segments shown below are parallel. Use a straight edge to extend them as needed. All right, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at each one of these three and just figure out for yourself, do you think that they're parallel or do you think they're not parallel? Take a moment to do this. All right, well, again, here's where it's important that lines extend forever. Because if you looked at these two lines, you might say, well, they don't intersect, right? And certainly the way they're drawn currently, they don't. But this line, of course, goes forever in this direction. I'm not going to take out the, the straight edge right now. And this one goes forever in this direction, which means they intersect or share a common point eh, right about there, right? So these two lines are most certainly not parallel, all right? But did you say these two are? I hope so because this pair is parallel. And again, don't get into weird things like, well, but this line is shorter than this one. Lines have infinite lengths. They're actually all as long as one another. But the length is actually irrelevant. The plain fact is if I extended this forever and I extended this one forever, they would share no common points. Now, these two things aren't lines, to be very clear about it. They are segments. But we will only say that two segments are parallel if the lines on which they lie are also parallel. So like two segments could easily not intersect. You know, you could have a segment like this and a segment like this, right? And those two segments don't intersect. But if I extended the segments to create lines out of them, those two would intersect, right? And therefore these two wouldn't be parallel. But these two, these two are. So if I drew the lines in, that these two segments come from, they would never intersect. So these are parallel, and these are parallel. All right. Our eyes tend to be actually quite good at noticing things that are parallel. For instance, the top of my screen and the top of this video should be if we've done a perfect job of like adjusting our, our cameras and our angles and things like that, those two should be parallel. Side note, it's very hard to get them parallel, but they should be. And our eyes should be pretty good at seeing whether or not the distance between two lines is getting smaller, in which case they'll intersect eventually, or it's basically staying the same. Let's keep going. All right, parallel lines and geometric figures. There's lots of geometric figures that you've learned about in the past, things like trapezoids, parallelograms, rectangles, triangles, squares, things like that, that might have pairs of sides that are parallel to each other. Now keep in mind that when you talk about something like a trapezoid in letter A or a parallelogram in letter B, keep in mind that all of the sides are segments, right? They're not lines, they're segments, but then that takes us back to the last 
problem where two segments can be parallel as long as the lines on which they lie are parallel. So let's take a look at exercise number two. A trapezoid is a four-sided figure with at least one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram, on the other hand, is a four-sided figure with exactly two pairs of parallel sides. For A and B, name all pairs of parallel sides. Well, let's take a look at the trapezoid together, right? We've got trapezoid A, B, C, D. We name figures, we'll get into this more by just naming off their, their, their vertex points going around clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever. Anyway, clearly side A, B and side C, D are not parallel, right? Because if we extended A, B and if we extended C, D, doing this really quickly, they'd eventually intersect somewhere up there. On the other hand, side BC and side AD, those are parallel to each other. So I can say BC and AD. Those are parallel sides. Notice I put the segment bar above BC and above AD because they're segments, they're not lines, they're not rays. All right, find the two pairs of parallel sides in parallelogram M, N, O, P. All right, and I have a little bit of a mismatch in the letters here and the letters here. So let me just change what it says up here. It should have said M, N, P, Q. I don't know where the O even came from. So let's do this, M, N, P, Q. Great, anyway, so in parallelogram M, N, P, Q, M, N is parallel to Q, P. Right, this is parallel to this. We can show that by drawing little arrows on here. So M, N, and Q, P. You could also call them P, Q, and N, M, right? And likewise, M, Q is parallel to N, P. I might show that by drawing a couple arrows on here to distinguish it, so then I might say M, Q, and N, P. All right. And it's amazingly important because when you have figures that have parallel sides, all sorts of cool things happen in terms of sides also being equal in length and whatnot. All right, let's keep going. Now, maybe the most important thing about parallel lines are when they get crossed by a third line. When a th third line crosses two parallel lines, as we've got in the situation here, that third line is what's called a transversal. To transverse means to walk across. I transversed the continental USA. I didn't, but let's say I walked across the US, I would have transversed it. A transversal is a line that crosses two parallel lines. When that happens, eight angles are formed, and I've got those angles numbered up here to make our lives easier so that we don't have to use three letter naming systems because that would get a beast, become a beast in a problem like this. All right, but eight angles are formed. All right, all of that I've kind of discussed up here. All right, letter A then in exercise number three says use a protractor to find the measures of angle one and angle five. All right, well, let's find the measure of angle one. I'm gonna take my protractor, I'm gonna bring it up here. I'm gonna set it down, hopefully, so that the center of the protractor is at the vertex of the angle. Maybe I'll kind of make this even a little bit bigger, okay? And if need be, I could even extend my ray just using a straight edge, all right? And what I would find, let me shrink this down a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better, hopefully, is that that is an angle of 55 degrees, and I'll throw away my compass, at my protractor at the same time. So the measure of angle one is 55 degrees. Yeah, it looks about right, it's definitely an acute angle. Let's take a look at the measure of angle five. All right, if we bring that down, now let me kind of blow it up a little bit bigger, you might be able to see it bigger. We will see that the measure of angle five, right, this angle going up this ray, is also 55 degrees. Now, I'm kind of hoping that your visualization is good enough to say, sure, yeah, it kind of, that, that looks right. Angle one and angle five look 
like they would have the same angle, right? And they do. Now let's take a look at letter B. Let me just scroll it up a little bit. Letter B says, using facts about straight angles and vertical angles, find the measurements of all the remaining angles based on your answers to A. All right, so really quick, based on my answers to A, I'm just gonna write those things up on my diagram. So angle one was 55 degrees, and angle two was 55 degrees. Now it says, based on vertical angles and straight angles, find the measures of all the other ones. And here's what I mean by that. Let's do like a few of them together, okay? So up here, right, I can look at angle one and angle two, and I can say, well, angle one plus angle two, well, those two must add up to 180 degrees. They form a straight angle. They're supplementary. So I can find angle two by just doing 180 degrees minus 55 degrees, and that's going to be 125 degrees. So angle two, 125 degrees. All right, awesome, let me write that in on my picture and down here. Now, watch how quick things become now. Angle three and angle one are a vertical angled pair, and therefore they must have the same measures. So angle three must be 55 degrees. So I'm gonna put that in, right? Likewise, angle two and angle four are vertical angled pairs, so they must have equal measures. So angle four must be 125 degrees. Well, what I'd like you to do is fill in all the rest. Pause the video now and go ahead and do so. All right, well, you should see something that becomes very, very easy, right? Let me just fill this one in. That's 125 degrees, right? Angle six, for the same reason as angle two, must be 125 degrees. Angle seven, because it's vertical to angle five, must be 55 degrees. And angle eight, because it's vertical to angle six, must be 125 degrees. Sorry about how crowded that all got. Let me write them here. Angle six is 125. Angle seven is 55 degrees. And angle eight is 125 degrees. Look at those angles. 125, 55, 125, 55. 125, 55, 125, 55. Letter C, I've got my thinker back. What can you say about the angles created by parallel lines? All right, I'd like you to pause the video now and do some thinking and write down everything that you can come up with. All right, so let's talk about it, right? We've got a lot of observations we could make. You know, one observation I make right away is that of these eight angles, four of them are acute, you know, smaller than 90, and four of them are obtuse, larger than 90. And it looks like all the acute angles, 55, 55, 55, 55, are equal. And all of the obtuse angles, 125, 125, 125, 125, are equal. So that's an observation I would put down sort of immediately. I'd say all acute angles are equal and all obtuse angles are equal. But maybe the most important observation, and that's an absolutely critical one to make, is that angles that show up in the same relative places on the parallel lines are equal to each other. Those are what we call corresponding angles. So in other words, angle one, if you wanna think about it, of these four angles is in the upper right-hand corner. Down here, the one that corresponds to it is angle five. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Angle four corresponds to angle eight. They're also equal measures. Angle seven corresponds to angle three, they're equal measures. And angle two corresponds with angle six, and they're equal in measure. So another observation I would say is 
angles that show up in the same relative locations are equal. We'll talk a lot more about corresponding angles in the next lesson along with other types of angle pairs, but let's test this idea in the last problem of the lesson. Here we go. When two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, angles that are in the same relative position have equal measures, known as corresponding angles. Exercise 4. Parallel lines W and Z are crossed by transversal M such that a 30 degree angle is created as shown. Fill in all other seven angles that are created. Fantastic. Well, it's very, very simple, right? And we can start in many different places, but where we want to start with is corresponding. If that angle is 30, then that angle there is also 30. I don't have any letters or numbers or anything like that, but this angle and this angle correspond. Right? They're in the same place. If you will, this is in the upper right-hand corner of these four angles, and this one's in the upper right-hand corner of these four angles. But now I can fill everything else in. Maybe the easiest ones are the vertical angles, right? So if that's 30 degrees, this is, th well, that's 30 degrees, right? If this one's 30 degrees, and by 30 I mean these two. If this one's 30, this one's 30, right? So it's easy to fill in vertical angles. Likewise, I can now use supplementary angles to say, well, this angle plus this angle must be 180. So if I do 180 minus 30, I'll find that this angle is 150 degrees. Maybe I'll draw that with two arcs just to distinguish it. That means this angle also must be 150 due to vertical angle pairs. This angle would have to be 150 either due to supplements or due to the fact that it corresponds. And this one also must be 150. There they are. So when I've got two parallel lines crossed by a transversal, if I'm given even a single angle that's formed, I can find all the other seven. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So today we reviewed what parallel lines were, right? They are two lines that no matter how long they extend, they don't share any points in common, which means they don't intersect, right? Parallel rays and parallel segments can occur as long as they're lying on parallel lines. We looked a little bit about at polygons that have some parallel sides, but mostly what we want to concentrate on is this idea that when two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal line, eight angles are formed. In those eight angles, the four angles that are obtuse are equal in measure, the four angles that are acute are equal in measure, right? And the angles that show up in the same relative positions on those parallel lines have equal measures to one another. All right, we're going to see more parallel lines in the next lesson and moving forward in the geometry portions of this course. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.